When the file is finished downloading, just go to wherever you saved it and open up the zip file. These folders and files are everything we need to run the foundation framework. Normally, I just copy these into a new site's root folder and start building. In order for our lessons to work properly, though, they will all need to link up to the files here just like normal web pages. So I've set up a folder here in the working files called Working Website, which will act as our root. Just select all the files and folders in the zip and copy them directly into the Working Website folder. Now all of our lesson files will be able to link to them from a common spot, and we can just close the zip. Now let's take a closer look at the foundation files. First, we'll open up the CSS folder. The first file here is foundation.css, and it contains all of the default styles for everything in Foundation. This is the main CSS file that we'll be using for our lessons. It's formatted so it's easy to read and edit. Of course, we won't be making any changes here directly, but we will be using it to look up settings that we want to customize. The next is a foundation min CSS file, and this is just a minimized version of the same CSS file. All the spacing's been removed, so you can use this on production sites when you want faster loading. The next file, normalized CSS, is included as a reset file to remove some browser quirks, and that's so all web page elements will render consistently across all devices and browsers. Some of the foundation styles are dependent on this, so we'll be using it too. Now let's open up the JS folder. The first file inside is foundation-min.js, and this is the main foundation JavaScript file. It contains the code for all foundation functions. For our lessons, we'll be linking to this file so we can try everything out. The foundation folder has all of those same features separated out, so if you only want a few of the functions for a particular site, you can pick out just those JS files to load instead of the everything file, and keep the load smaller and more lightweight. Lastly, we have the vendor folder. And this just has a few optional JavaScript plugins from other shops, which Foundation needs for all of its features to work right. The two most important are jQuery, since a lot of the Foundation JS files use it, and Modernizer, which is an open source tool to detect browsers and devices. It sets up conditional JavaScript and CSS to handle each situation. We'll be including both of these files for all of our lesson examples. The remaining three are optional, but very good resources when you need the features. FastClick is a small library that eliminates the click delay for buttons on certain tablets. Placeholder is a JavaScript support which sets up form inline labels for older browsers that don't handle the HTML5 placeholder attribute correctly. And jQuery Cookie is just an easy way to read and write cookies. To make use of any of these features, all you need to do is include the JS files on your page. Now back out in the working website folder, we're left with just a few more files. Two of them are text files, humans and robots. Now a human's text file is completely optional, but it's also a nice and unintrusive way to give some credit to the humans who contribute to a site. This one has some credits set up for the Zurb Foundation platform, which you could add to your own humans text file with your credits. The file is optional and it's totally up to you if you want to include it with the site files. The robots text file is also optional, but it can really help the way your site is seen by search engine robots. So it's a good idea to have one. The one included with Foundation is basically just a blank starter file, which you can use if you haven't created your own yet. If you haven't made a robot text file before, you can find a lot of helpful information by visiting the two web addresses that are here right at the top of the text file. 